I did a story time about my time in Paris as a model. I loved seeing how interested you were. A lot of you asked to see more of these story times and that's why I'm creating this one for Tokyo. I started modeling when I was about 16 years old and I legitimately stopped modeling maybe three years ago or so. So I had a career of over a decade. In case you guys didn't watch the Paris one, I'm gonna put it right here. Tokyo was literally the first place to just open my eyes to something different, to something that I never imagined is out in the world. I would not have the chance to be in a place like Japan if it wasn't for modeling. So I'm forever grateful for that. Tokyo was my second trip in my international modeling career after Paris. I was then 16 years old. I got chosen by an agency. My agency was Bravo Models. Wow, I can't believe I remember that. And they were a really awesome agency. They represented some really Really amazing strong girls in the industry I was so lucky that they contacted my mother agency in Israel and asked me to come Asia used to be just like the money-making market for models especially for Russian models there were a lot of Russian models and I think it was mostly because of the kind of dollish like features so it was an amazing market for someone like me who's not very tall because they didn't really care about that that much the way it used to be is that you would sign a contract for about 30 days 60 days I went there my first time for a month they give you kind of a promised amount that you will come back home with I got on that plane I was so scared and so confused I wasn't even thinking twice about the fact that hey I'm 16 years old going to a country don't really know what's going on what I'm doing where I'm going who I'm gonna be with let's also mention the fact that I went there for a month with $20 in my pocket because I didn't have money or I had money and I spent it because I wasn't very smart with finance back then. Paris, when you arrive, an agency meets you there. In Tokyo, it wasn't the case. They just emailed me the address I need to get to and that's it. When I was on the plane, it didn't dawn on me that I don't have money to get to that place. So um, I just... <sighs> remember that I was sitting beside this young guy and we started talking he was telling me how his friends were coming to pick him up and I was like listen can you give me a ride by any chance I have no idea where I'm going or what I'm doing and I don't have enough money to get a taxi he's like sure I I didn't remember that detail and it just hit me that that's what happened that's how I arrived from the airport to the model apartment that I had like so dangerous what the hell was I thinking thankfully they were super helpful so nice they got me to where I needed to be and then they're like Bye. I got to the agency. The agency was in Ripongi. Ripongi is kind of like the touristy area. So there's a lot of people from different parts of the world. A lot of the models apartment are there. It's kind of like a central area for that. I arrived to the agency. Again, there's such a big contrast between the cultures, language barrier, and just like the customs of, you know, Japanese people and what I was used to. I didn't really know what to do. I just kept bowing to everybody. That got me by, I'm not gonna lie. The apartment were sufficient there was enough space for everybody my first roommate was a girl I think her name was Elvira yes and she was from a place in Russia I don't remember where she was very young as well no my first roommate was a Canadian girl. Her name is Erica, and I actually think I still have her on Facebook, and she lives in Canada, she got married, had a baby. She was my first roommate. Now I remember. I felt a connection to her because at that point, my mother already moved to Canada, so I was like, oh, Canada, Canadian. She was really sweet. Uh, she was an experienced model. She like knew you know, the ins and outs of the industry. I have good memories of her. Then, the fun part began when the agency was like, oh, you have a job tomorrow. So that was the day after I landed. And I was so confused because I was like, well, I haven't really gone to castings like you already booked me They're like, yeah, I get to the job 16 year old lost confused and I look young to you guys now Can you imagine the baby face I had when I was 16? My first job was a catalog for pregnancy clothes That was a real interesting experience. They put a belly on me and I was just it was so something alright. When I think about Tokyo, I just have all these flashes of memories of these kind of experiences that were so awesome, so funny, so different, so like what? The fact that I looked young wasn't a negative like it was in other parts of the world. So basically my first job was pregnancy clothes. I remember it was pretty 
interesting again you can really communicate they're just like kind of signal you with your hands okay you go and set give you clothes the way it works in tokyo or worked before in tokyo was that every day unless you have a job where the client will pick you up and take you there you meet every morning at like 8 or 9 a.m downstairs there's a minivan with a driver and an agent and there's all the girls that are going to the casting so it's basically like a little model bus that has stops at casting some castings i'm part of others are not and the manager at the front he speaks english and japanese and he's kind of the middleman between you and the client so he tells you what to do and communicates with you it was very like structured situation which i appreciated it wasn't kind of like here's a map go which was in paris there they obviously understood that a lot of us first of all don't speak the language can't read anything so they kind of took more care of us and it was nice especially because there were so many young girls we would stop at a casting he'll call like okay valeria lana erica and those were the girls that would go to the castings and then we go back to the van and continue to the next destination and that will go up until probably 4 or 5 p.m sometimes 6 so it was long hours of just sitting walking in and out of castings it actually gave us time to connect and to create friendships and bond together i met some amazing girls through this experience and then basically would finish our castings we come home we'll shower we'll eat and and we'll go out to the club. That was my Tokyo experience. It was really going out every night because there was nothing really else to do. There were all these clubs in the area that wanted to get models in there. So they're giving you free dinners and free drinks. Then other local people or tourists will be more excited to go to that club. I had so much fun. I was really like young and wild and free. Sometimes when people ask me now that I, the fact that I got married at such a young age or had kids so young, they're like, don't you feel like you missed out i don't have this missing out feeling because i had experiences like tokyo and paris and london i started going out and doing all these things at such a young age that i really feel like i really just took it all in and fast-tracked all of it some of the jobs that i've had there that i remember so well some of them were so so random and so weird i remember i had one fashion shoot where they made me into a clown i was just like what this is not fashion i don't know what's going on at some point you really get like this attached from the way they dress you or put makeup on you because you understand that this is their market what you like and what you think is fashionable might not work there i had shoots where they put like this big extensions and like hair on my head and put birds in there i I also remember very very clearly how there was one photo shoot where the makeup artist curled my lashes and they didn't have that rubber in between so it cut my lashes and I just like felt it fall on my cheek that was fun and again you can't really communicate so the person is like oh, and then you're like oh. Also, some of my fun memories are those rice things that you would get at the 7-Eleven. It was rice and then inside it was like tuna. Some had some other things inside. That was my favorite snack and I think I ate it maybe like five times a day. And then I would say the highlight of my time in Tokyo was when I got chosen to be in a hip hop video. Yes, guys, you heard it right. This girl was in a hip hop video. The artist was Zebra, and I think he's still around. We came to the casting and they put music on and you just needed to start dancing. I was dancing my heart out and then my agent was like, oh, they booked you. I felt like Jenny from the block. I can't wait to show it to Jake and Ben and Max would be like, your mom was in a hip hop video, so. I'll be forever cool. Also, I will never forget the fact that the video was sponsored by Snickers. It was like everywhere on the set. The guy was inside the pool with Snickers. When he was rapping and we were dancing, we would hold Snickers. And when they sent us home, they gave us Snickers. I had an amazing time there and I honestly, I cannot wait to go back to Japan. There's so many places I haven't been to. So I told Gary that I would love, once the kids are a little older, to go and do a proper trip, to go to the more traditional side and also be in Tokyo and experience that culture. I just love Japan. Okay, a few words that I remember. I used to know some phrases and words, but I don't think I have them in my memory anymore. So the only thing I remember is when I was at the agency and the agent will pick up their phone and they'll say, 
obviously arigato and then when I would walk out of stores or restaurants everybody would be arigato gozaimasu thank you guys so much for watching this I hope you enjoyed it I'm putting this out to the universe Japan I hope I will see you again arigato gozaimasu I hope you enjoyed my rap video debut and if you want to hear more about my modeling stories check out Paris Storytime right there